Hello folks, welcome back to our IBM 1401 exhibit, our dinosaur computer from the 1960s. Uh, and today I want to uh, take you through one of the challenging repairs we had to do on uh, this tape unit. Uh, and that will give you a chance to see how uh, it's built in the inside and it's quite amazing actually. So this tape is uh, called vacuum column tape and uh, the, the way it works is that instead of going directly under the reed head the tape first is sucked in by vacuum in this vacuum column right here that Carl just opened for us and then it allows the tape to coil into a reservoir here and the capstan can pull on it very very fast it can start and stop uh, so fast that it can just read one record at a time uh, and of course that's done so this can be operated like disk drives which didn't exist at the time. So, so in a second we are going to uh, hit the load button and you will see how the tape is sucked in the vacuum column. Actually you will hear the vacuum coming on first. Uh, so Carl if you can load it. Right. And here we go. And then what you see the reels moving here is just uh, the reel trying to keep the level of the tape at the right place over here and right here behind this door there's a little hole and this senses vacuum and activates the little, the little vacuum contact so all the reels do is react to replenish the supply in the vacuum tape and the tape itself is driven by another motor right here uh, at a much faster rate. So now let's look at it from the back how it's constructed. Uh, well first there's a little bit of electronics in it in this cabinet and it's this uh, same uh, rather simple SMS cars that we have in the main 1401 and lots of relay logic which is almost impossible to follow on the diagrams. Uh, quite a few lights to tell you the state of the tape. Then that big thing actually yeah, and push it swings out and reveals all the motors we have here. Uh, so to make that tape work there's no less than eight motors. There is the two motors for the main hubs the two motors for the capstan, the one that actually moved the tape, uh, two motors for loading the tape, uh, one for the fast rewind, so that's seven, and down there, I don't know if you can see it, a super big one that's for the vacuum. So no less than eight motors to make that thing work. So now I want to draw your attention to this assembly here. Uh, this is a series of magnetic clutches and they are used to uh, clutch in and out the different motors that we talked about. Uh, this one is used just for load and these are the two main clutches for backwards and forward. Uh, so what happens, the motor run continuously, the big ones there, and they are just clutched in and out uh, which allows the hub to accelerate so fast and give it this funny jerky motion. Uh, so, uh, Carl is going to load the tape and we're going to try to see it from the back. That's the loading clutch. And then now you see the tape doing their funny motions here. And it's just this clutch coming in and out uh, on a regular basis until the tape is in position. Okay, so now we have them uh, reading and writing. And you can hear the noise of the capstan starting and stopping right here. It's kind of vibrating. And you can see the hubs trying to catch up to replenish the vacuum column around this sensor point over here and the other lower sensor point over there. So that's what gives them that uh, incredible random motion. And our specific problem here is with the way those clutches are actuated. 
since they are rotating you need a slip ring to provide the current and those are those two uh, copper rings and right on them you have a block uh, of brushes uh, that provides the current and right on them and uh, those of course with the time they are spent riding on these copper traces are failing and we need to replace them this is the uh, original brush block uh, with two brushes this one is still there the other one is totally gone it's broken it's inside the hole One came out, the other one is stuck. stuck, there we go. So here's a bunch of old brushes and they are all worn out and uh, IBM won't send us any new ones from 1959. So the only solution is that we have to make new ones. So here we go, is our little machine part should have a little hole in it. And that should be just good enough to put the wire in. I'll need to silver epoxy it. And voila! The carbon brush like in 1959. And another thing we need to make uh, the uh, reproduction of the brushes is the flexible wire at the back. And we had a really hard time finding the, the right wire but fortunately it turns out that uh, the company I work for actually makes wire in Oregon we make a very high-end uh, wire for RF applications and one of the engineers over there Shashi heard my plight and I sent him a sample and he made me the exact same wire the holes full of it except he upgraded it to uh, silver plated copper so we have the wire also faithful to the IBM original here are the brushes with the uh, wire epoxied Okay, so that's the repair brush block.
two nice brushes going down and now it should work perfectly fine so that's the well, super heavy that's the clutch um, and that's the slip ring and that's where our brushes go they slide on those two copper rings Putting the belts back together. So here are the connectors. Okay, fire is on. That clutch is working, but that's good. It means that clutch did work yeah. because it loaded. There you go. Aha! Uh, no sparking. No sparking. Unfortunately, I like the sparking. That was pretty spectacular. We don't need that. <laughs> I like it. Alright, so our brushes are doing their job. Okay, program's in. Tape's not happy. Oh, it's, it's better when it's in normal mode, okay. Hey, Andy? I brought her to use that drive. Just with on tape one, that's the one we want to know if it reads without errors. Printer on. There it goes. So tape is working. We are writing and reading on the tape, hopefully. And is it supposed to print some uh, errors in there? More errors then. And uh, there you go. What does it say? Tape demo program. Eggy. Zero error counts. Zero error counts. Yeah. Oh. So that did it. That did it. It was the sparking. How was it? So what happened is that we just uh, wrote a whole bunch of stuff on the tape, and it tells us that it didn't get an error. Uh, so the brush arcing was causing the error, and now they're good brushes, and now we're good to go. We're going to try a high-speed rewind. So it, it just unloads the tape and do it, the high-speed rewind and then zoop, off it goes. And there's a special motor to do that, which I think is this guy. For the high-speed rewind. And at one point it thinks it's full enough, it reloads the tape and continues the uh, rewind in low speed using the clutches and the regular motor because it's using that one and it's clutching in and out thanks for brushes there you go and it's unloading <laughs>
There you go. Darn it. <laughs>